my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. Today we'll have our lesson number 81 of the vocabulary words. Vocabulary words, day 81 in the series of 100. Let's get going. The very first word we have today, the very first word we're going to learn today, number 422, is Eriodite is how it, that's how it's pronounced. Eriodite. Air. It's an adjective. It's an adjective. So the question now is, what does it mean if you were to describe somebody as being erudite? If someone is described as being erudite, that means that person is is someone, someone with a great deal of knowledge. Great deal of knowledge. Someone someone with a with a great deal of learning someone someone who is scholarly someone who is scholarly someone who has a great deal of knowledge someone who has a great deal of uh, learning someone who is well read someone Someone who is well read is said to be erudite. Let's learn one more word, shall we? Next word is related to this word. Someone, someone who is. This is the word we're going to learn. Okay. Well, let's do it right here. This is going to be 423. This word that you see here, the very fir the, the, the first meaning that everybody knows, that meaning of the word here does not fit. But the meaning that most people know of this word is when it is pronounced as when it is pronounced as learned, learned, which is simply the past tense of learn. It is the past tense of learn. I want to learn it. I have learned it. It is also spelled it is also spelled this is also spelled L E A R N T learnt or learned with the E D at the end which is simply the past tense of learn. But that is not how the word is being used here. We are describing somebody, somebody, somebody who is, how do we pronounce this word in this context when it is used as an adjective? Here, it is the past tense of learn. If you pronounce it this way, learned is the past tense of learn. How do we pronounce it here? It has two different meanings depending on how it is pronounced. One meaning is a verb, past tense of learn, another meaning is an adjective. Of course, it would, be a, it would have to be an adjective because you are using it as a synonym of this word. Of course, the first syllable is the same, lur. First syllable is the same, lur, lur. And the second syllable, instead of being nerd, lur, learned, is lur, nid, learned, nid, nid, learned. What does it mean when you describe someone as being learned? Not learned, learned. If you describe someone as being learned, that means he's scholarly, he's well read, he does a lot of knowledge. He's erudite, she's erudite, she's, she has a profound knowledge, she, she's, uh, she's full of wisdom, she knows a lot. Learn it, learn it and learn. Make sure you pronounce it properly depending on the context. Here it is being used as an adjective, learn it. Michael is learn it. Why is it learn it? Because he has learned a lot, he has learned a lot. Because he has learned it a lot. Someone who is erudite, someone who is well read. So these two, these two are synonyms. Learn it and erudite. Learn it and erudite. Someone who is a scholar, as we said. Someone who is scholarly. This means a scholar. Erudite. Let's move on. The next word we're going to learn today. So that's all it was. It's a simple word. And yet, people sometimes do not know how to pronounce it. If it appears 
when it appears as, as an adjective as opposed to a verb, a past tense of learn. Let's move on then. The next part we're going to learn is again a very simple word again a very simple word but of course we're covering it for a reason and the word is profound some people pronounce it with this first syllable being per profound and some people prefer to pronounce it as Profound, profound, pro or pro, they are both acceptable pronunciations. Profound, profound. What does it mean? It means deep. Deep. Thorough. Absolute. Absolute. People talk about profound silence. Profound silence. There was a profound silence in the courtroom. People talk about a profound truth. Or you can also talk about somebody being somebody being profoundly profoundly. Here is the adverb profoundly affected. Profoundly affected. It's an A. Profoundly affected. A with the word. We learned this thing. And if you have not watched that video, just just type in effect versus effect and watch that video where we learned how to keep them separate. The mnemonic device that we learned, the mnemonic device that we learned was, let's put it here, in the video, in the video titled effect versus effect with an E, we learned this mnemonic device, Raven, Raven is a bird, we learned that to keep them separate, this is the mnemonic device we use, remember, effect is a verb and effect is a noun and the mnemonic we use is raven as I said it's a bird so somebody we can describe somebody being profoundly affected profoundly if he's profoundly affected by this episode and he was profoundly affected by the by the death of his mother that means he was deeply affected he was he was deeply affected he was thoroughly affected by it he was uh, he had a profound impact on him. Yeah, he had a profound impact on it. Why are we learning this word? It's, as you can see, it's a very simple word. Of course, it's a very simple word. Most people know it. Most people do know the word profound, but what is the noun of it? Do you know the noun of profound? Noun would be, which is why we're learning it, because it, is, it was not the word profound that we are interested in learning here. Of course, we know that already. It is the noun that we want to learn. The noun of profound is per fun di ti. Profundity. Profundity is noun. Profound means deep, and profundity means depth. Of course, it means depth because. The noun of deep is depth. Noun of profound is profundity. Noun of profound is profundity, thoroughness, absoluteness. Let's move on. The next word we're going to learn has absolutely nothing to do with profound. It has nothing to do with anything at all. It's an entirely different word. Just give me a second. I drop my uh, I drop my high tech uh, eraser, so I have to pick it up. That's it. We're done with it. Remember, profundity is a noun. Next two or three words that we're going to learn will have to do with time. Will have to do with time. Let's learn the very first word. It's an adjective. And what is the word? The word is anachronistic. O nac. Ro-ness-tic. Anachronistic. What does it mean if you were to describe something as being anachronistic? The word comes from the noun, which is
anachronism, anachronism, anachronism. Oh, neck, ro. As you can see, the first three syllables are the same. Oh, neck, ro. Oh, neck, ro. Anachronism. Niz, niz, um. Anachronism, which simply means not belonging to the correct time period. Not belonging to the correct time period. Not of the time period. Not, literally, that's what it means, literally. The prefix A means not, and then we have in it, buried in it, I don't know if you can see it, buried in it we have chrono. Chrono, which has to do with time. And we'll see it in a second. We'll see in a we'll see it in a second. The word, the term chrono, in a second. In a couple of other two, couple of other, couple of other word, words that we'll learn in a second. So literally, it means not of the time, not of the time, not of the time. Let me give you an example to make you understand how to use this word in what context. Let's say, for example. You're watching. You're watching a play. You're watching a play. Uh, let's pick some historical event uh, from 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 years ago. Let's say there's a there's a there's a there's a play about uh, pick any event. It all really doesn't matter. Uh, let's say there is a play play about civil war. Okay, and if, for those of you who are watching outside the U.S., you wouldn't know what the hell I'm talking about. Let's pick something that we all recognize. Some play about some historical event. Uh, let's say some some documentary about the Second World War. How about that? Second World War is being played on the stage. Is being played on the stage, and uh, the dress is there. Or some play about from the 18th century, but the but but the dresses all the actors are wearing are very modern. They're wearing blue jeans. They're wearing they're wearing uh, Nike. You know, the, uh, I don't want to use any brand name, but they're wearing a brand that did not exist in 18th century. All their costumes are not of the period that they are depicting. The play is about something that happened in the 18th century, but the costumes do not belong to that time period. The costumes are all modern. They are wearing wristwatches, they have, they have iPhone in their pockets. The, the, the costume is very, the costumes are very, very anachronistic. They do not belong to the time period. They, they are not of the same time period. They, are, they belong to a different time period. They are not of the correct time period. It's anachronistic. It is. The costumes are anachronistic. Anachronism is the word. Let's learn one more word which has to do with time. And the word is going to be... Chronometer. 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 What is a chronometer? Chronometer is a very fancy way of saying chronometer. Again, chronometer has the prefix of chrono, has the prefix of chrono, which means time, and meter means to measure. Like thermometer, barometer, all sorts of meters. If it says meter, it measures something. Chronometer is something that measures time. Well, it's something that measures time. Well, that's just a timepiece. That's just a, just a, just a timepiece. But what exactly is a chronometer? Chronometer is a very special kind of timepiece. It's a timepiece that is exceptionally precise. And exceptionally... And, an exceptionally precise timepiece. Timepiece is one word. Timepiece is one word. An exceptionally precise timepiece is said to be not a watch but a chronometer. Rolex does not call its watches watches. They do not refer to their watches, their timepieces as watches. Rolex does not sell watches. They sell chronometers because they are exceptionally precise. It's a piece of art. It's not something that you buy in a regular store. Because that's what it is. It's a chronometer, not a watch. Do you understand? 
An exceptionally precise timepiece is said to be a chronometer. It measures time. Again, related to the same, related to the same prefix of chrono, we can have the word here that we have all seen. A very simple word that we have all seen, and the word is chronological. Chronological. What does it mean when you say something is arranged chronologically? If something is arranged chronologically, it is it is a chronological arrangement. That means it is arranged. It is arranged in order of time. Something that is arranged in order of time is said to be arranged chronologically. That's the adverb chronologically. Can you add the ly at the end? Chronologic. For example, let me give you let me give an example, an instance where you would say that this thing is arranged chronologically. For example, let's say for example you're giving an exam in the classroom to a bunch of students, and the system is very straightforward. Since it's an exam day, I would like to see who took the exam, who was in the class and who was not. So I put a piece of paper on, 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 a, on a notepad here and I tell everybody that as you walk in the classroom, as you walk in the classroom, you must you must sign your names. You must sign your name on this in this piece of paper before you sit down. So first Michael walks in, he puts his name, then Barbara walks in, she puts her name, then Jennifer walks in, she puts in and so on and so forth. And I have 30 students, so by the, by the end uh, hopefully everybody showed up for the exam. And I will have a list there with everybody's individual handwriting, a list of 30 names. Well this list of 30 names, how is it arranged? Well obviously it's not arranged alphabetically, is it? It is not arranged alphabetically, it is not arranged by age, I'm not asking their age, it is not arranged uh, uh, by the town they come from. How is it arranged? What's the, what's the system here? It's not haphazard, there is a system there. It, that, era, that list, even though it may seem random, it may seem randomly arranged, because it's not alphabetical, is it? It's not randomly arranged. It is arranged how? It is arranged chronologically. It is arranged in the order of time. Because if Barbara's name is the second name on the list, then I know she was the second person to arrive. And Michael's name is the very bottom of the list because then I know that he was the last person to arrive in the classroom to take the exam. It's chronologically arranged. How is it arranged? It is arranged in the order of time. Bye now.